What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. Got a uh, little change of pace today. Let's get to these projects I've got going around here. So first off, I gotta do a little regular scheduled maintenance on my wife's Equinox. Oil change, tire rotation. Nothing super exciting. Gotta get that knocked out. And then uh, I've got something to work on on my blue truck, my 2017 Duramax. That's gonna be a little bit more involved, so I'll bring you back when I get to that part. This is, you could do an oil change. You don't need me to tell you how to do an oil change. I'm gonna get this done, get on to the blue truck. All right, oil change went smoothly. Air filter looked good. And I wound up not not rotating the tires on my wife's car because we're coming into fall and winter now. And uh, the tires in the front were the better of the four. And I want the better tires on the steer axle. Plus that thing's primarily front wheel drive. So uh, I left them how they are. So she's good to go. Now, this thing, this girl here, got a couple things to take care of uh, both seem to be uh, very common issues let me show you the first one is it gonna show me there it is coolant level low add coolant so that appears to be a very common problem with these trucks and then you see my check engine light is on over there as well So the coolant level low, uh, like I said, common issue with these trucks. And from everything I've read and seen, apparently the coolant level sensor goes bad. And in GM's universal wisdom, where is it? The sensor is molded into the coolant reservoir. So you can't just replace the sensor. You have to replace the whole reservoir. Now, fortunately, I think I got this on Rock Auto. It was like 70 bucks. So it's not a terrible price, especially, I mean, I've bought sensors that are 50 or 60 bucks just for a sensor. So a whole new coolant reservoir, yeah. It's a bummer, but I'm not super upset about it. The truck's got almost 70,000 miles on it now. The worst part is just gonna be, it's, it, what an inconvenient place to put it. So we're gonna get that coolant reservoir replaced. I'm gonna try to do it with making as small or as little mess as possible. So we'll see how that goes. It looks like this battery is gonna have to come out. This little support cross member is gonna have to come out and then Hopefully, maybe that'll give me enough room to sneak this thing out of there and get the new one put back into it. The check engine light. Now, it started as an intermittent check engine light. It would only come on every so often, usually on a really cold day, was, would be when it would come on. So I checked the codes and it had an intermittent code for cylinder seven, glow plug circuit. Now, uh, I checked the codes again when it finally stayed solid and it still is cylinder seven glow plug circuit. So I ordered a glow plug for it. And from what I've been seeing and reading on forums, it doesn't seem to be all the glow plugs go bad, but people do have one or two or, or a few glow plugs go bad. So I'm going to double check the code and make sure it's still cylinder seven glow plug circuit before I pull everything apart. And then I'll do a visual inspection and uh, assuming that all looks how it should, I'll go ahead and replace that cylinder seven glow plug. Uh, if I had 
further diagnostic tool and it wasn't such a common issue, I would test the current glow plug, make sure it's within range. I would test the wiring, make sure it's within range. But I'm about 95% sure the glow plug itself is the problem because everybody I read about, the glow plug is the problem. So uh, I think I'm gonna start with the glow plug and then I'll do the coolant reservoir. Oh, and once we get that finished, my driver's front tire has a slow leak in it. So I'm gonna have to get this thing off and see if I can't find something that would be causing a slow leak and get that repaired. It's super slow. It takes like two, three months to get down 10 PSI, but it is in fact leaking. So I wanna get that addressed. So uh, let me double check the codes and then Assuming it's still cylinder seven glow plug circuit, we'll get the wheel liner out and see if we can't get that number seven glow plug replaced. A few minutes later. Uh, I've got a million codes, but it looks like they're all stored codes. So I've got knock sensor performance, cylinder five glow plug offset exceeded learning limit, knock sensor performance, particulate matter sensor temperature performance. I've got a trailer, a couple trailer brake control codes, transfer case codes, electronic brake control codes, invalid data for the power steering module, control module issue, radio control, HVAC control, power circuit, power circuit. Most of these are power circuit codes. I'm not sure what exactly that means. Uh, so I think I'm gonna clear all of these codes and restart it and see what I get. See if I can't narrow down because most of those were history codes. So I'll clear them. It should run a self diagnostic again and report back any trouble codes it finds. Okay, well, I shut it off. I turned it back on again. I cycled the key a few times so it would run diagnostics on itself. And now I get no active codes except for B1325 which is control module power circuit uh, for the radio controls and for the radio. Uh, but everything in my radio and controls all seems to work fine. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now. And I think I'm just gonna save that glow plug since now I have conflicting data. I swear I remember it being cylinder seven, uh, but this, had cylinder five stored. So I'm just going to save that glow plug for the time being, and we're going to replace that coolant reservoir because I hate seeing that stupid coolant level low light coming on. And then we're going to find the leak in this tire and get it fixed. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I bought something fun for this truck. Uh, I've been waiting a long, long time. I mean, really, I've been waiting since this truck was brand new for them to figure out the technology. And somebody finally did it. And I want to put it on this thing. And I want to go test it out and see what happens. So we're going to do that today also. All right. So this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, I got the battery out. I took the little power distribution sensor center apart. I took all the wires off of the little the little power distribution block so I could get it out of my way. Important tip here. Uh, as always, if you're going to be disconnecting a battery, disconnect the negative first. Uh, on a dual battery vehicle, make sure you disconnect both negative terminals first because as long as you have one ground hooked up, the other positive will still arc because of that ground. So if you're working on something with dual batteries, make sure you remove, you disconnect both negative terminals 
before you disconnect the positive terminals. So beyond that, got all that disconnected, like I said, and then there's one top port that comes over to the coolant reservoir here. I disconnected that. I just have it clamped off. Largely just I'm trying to make as little mess as possible. And then there's one other line that comes into the reservoir here. There's a little 10 millimeter bolt right there. You take that bolt out and then the, disconnect your coolant level sensor, which is over here. Disconnect that and then your reservoir will slide out of there. Can I do it one handed? There we go. Now, what I want to try to do here, I got this half of a antifreeze jug. I'm going to sit this down in here, try to drain as much of this antifreeze, this coolant, into my jug to catch it as a possible. And then I'll clamp off this line, remove it, put my new reservoir in place, reinstall this line, hook everything back up, and then pour my coolant back in to the new reservoir. So hopefully I can do this without making a huge, huge mess. We'll see. I'll let you guys watch, because typically if there is a chance for me to make a mess, uh, no matter what precautions I take, I usually still end up making a mess. That is insanely tight. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Unlock. Tight. Huh. Okay. Note to self. This is a left-handed threaded cap. <laughs> Unlock, tighten. Ah, there we go. Just a tight spot, I guess. There we go. Now we're talking. Let's see how much of this actually goes in. As far as I can tell, this is the high point in the system, so once the reservoir is empty, that should be all that comes out. Okay. Alright. Okay, old reservoir. 
are out of the way. All right, so now I'll slide my new one in place. Make sure this cap is tight. Okay, that's loosened. That's tight. Okay. All the way down in here. All right, I got it all put back together. Reservoir filled, clamps in place, plug in place, hoses hooked up, wires hooked up, everything where it's supposed to be. So I want to start it up, make sure I don't get any leaks. I'm probably going to have to let it get up to operating temperature to be sure, but we'll start it up, let it warm up and make sure we don't see any leaks or drips or anything like that. So far, so good. I don't see any leaks or drips. Everything is dry. Let's let it warm up to operating temperature. I'll mess with that tire while I'm waiting. Okay, on to the fun stuff. Oh, I checked the tire. Can't find anything in it. No nails, no screws, no holes, no damage at all, really. So I checked the valve core and the valve core was just the tiniest smidge loose so i snugged it down and hopefully that was it i mean there are oversized tires there are somewhat aggressive tread pattern and i have had valve cores vibrate loose with like more aggressive tread patterns before so hopefully that's all it was just that valve core was a little loose um I mean, we'll know in two months if the low tire pressure comes back on again or the next time I go to haul a trailer with this thing and I check the tires, if that one's not at 65 PSI, I'll know it's still leaking and I'll have to do some further investigation. But for now, I think it's fine. Uh, now, let's get on to the fun stuff. Uh, like I said, I've been waiting since I bought this truck for somebody to figure out how to tune it without having to remove the PCM, send it out, let somebody else remove the anti-theft stuff out of it, the anti-tamper stuff out of it, and then send it back. And uh, Edge finally figured out how to do it. I actually ordered this like a month ago and just haven't had the time to mess with it. So I've got the Edge Evo HT2 here and their little interface module that supposedly talks to the truck and says hey it's cool let me change stuff so i'm gonna read the instructions and then we'll get this installed and we'll go do some testing i'll get the draggy out and we'll go see see what kind of difference it makes a little longer than a few minutes later my draggy it won't charge. It won't do anything. So I'm gonna have to look into that a little further and see if I can't figure out what is wrong with it. Cause that would be a real bummer if the thing's dead, but it's not working. I still wanna go out, see how this truck feels with a little tune in it. Uh, right now it's still set to stock. So I'm just gonna take it for a little ride on stock. Just so I ha can have a real like back to back close quarter comparison and then I'll stop put put one of the tunes in it and uh, see how it feels I mean the trucks peppy even in stock form so and uh, I'm excited to see what it does with a tune in it I think that'll make a big big difference but let me get over to uh, drive it around stop a little bit and then I'll go put a tune in it. I'll pick which one I want to do and then we'll try that out and see how it feels. Hopefully I can feel the difference. I think one of the, I think the one higher tune is supposed to be like a hundred horsepower added, which you should feel the difference. So we'll see. 
All right, so drove around a little bit. I'm ready to put a tune in it and see uh, see what that feels like. Okay, extreme tuning is now installed. All right. Let's go see what that feels like. Just a little throttle blip, it feels, uh, there's definitely a difference there. wanted to go and the traction control was pulling power because it was trying to spin the tires. with it and really uh, see all the real capabilities and differences and things that I can do with it. But until then, take care.